I have in my hand a small piece of magnesium ribbon. Magnesium is element number 12 on the periodic table. It's nice and bendy and it's this little ribbon shape. If you burn it, you'll get a very vigorous reaction out of it. Um, you're not supposed to look directly at it, I'm just kind of looking near it. And this reaction releases a lot of heat and a lot of light. I can feel the heat uh, coming at me. And as you look at a reaction like this, you might be wondering, well, how much heat is that? What is the enthalpy change for that reaction? Well, we can do that, but we have to use a couple of tricks. This is a very fancy piece of scientific equipment what we call a calorimeter. And you might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Rudolph, no, uh that's just a styrofoam cup. But yes, that's true. But it is very well insulated and it allows us to do chemical reactions inside of them while minimizing heat loss to the surroundings so we can keep track of all those little calories and things. So we're gonna use this to determine the enthalpy of the reaction we just saw. This right here is the equation for the burning of magnesium in air, which we've seen is very energetic, very hot, probably burns at a couple thousand degrees. And therefore we're gonna have some problems putting it into a styrofoam calorimeter uh, in order to find the heat change. So, you know, bad things will happen to the calorimeter. So we're gonna make use of Hess's law. And what is Hess's law? Hess's law is a law of thermochemistry, which says that if you start with a certain set of reactants and you end with a certain set of products, the energy change is going to be constant regardless of how many steps it takes you to get there. So in other words, you can do a reaction in one step, you can do a reaction in two steps or many steps, but if you start with the same reactants and end with the same products, you, the energy change will be the same, which allows us to do things indirectly. We're going to find delta H for this reaction, but by doing it kind of in a roundabout sort of way. So in this lab, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with magnesium, which is one of the reactants, and react it instead with hydrochloric acid. And that's gonna produce some magnesium chloride and hydrogen and we can find delta H for that reaction. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna start with some magnesium oxide, which is actually one of the, pro the product in the reaction, the target reaction, and react that with hydrochloric acid to make magnesium chloride and some water. And we're gonna find delta H for that. And then we uh, look up a reference equation. You can find this anywhere on Google or whatever. And the delta H for the formation of water from its elements, there's one half O2, notice that it's there. And that's negative 286 kilojoules. So the idea here is that you'll see each one of the reactants and products up here in this system of equations, three steps. And if we can get these three steps to add up to the overall step, then all we need to do is add up the overall del the delta H's to get an overall delta H. And that's the goal of this lab. I'm going to be using a small piece of magnesium for my reaction. It's only about two centimeters long, and I need to know the mass of it. And yikes, that's gonna be a problem. Sometimes the piece of magnesium ribbon that you wanna use for something is so small that it hardly weighs anything. And maybe the balance doesn't even register it, or even if it does, it might only give you one significant digit. And so to do a little bit better job, we're actually gonna weigh it by measuring its length. I'm gonna go with 2.65 centimeters on this thing. And keep in mind also a reminder that the ruler is going to the tenths place, so I'm actually gonna to go to the hundredths place, an estimated digit. So I measured out 100 centimeters using a meter stick of magnesium ribbon, and I'm going to measure the mass of 100 centimeters. This will allow me to set up a proportion where I can say 100 centimeters of magnesium ribbon is gonna weigh this much, so 2.65 centimeters is gonna weigh this much. And now the whole 100 centimeter section of magnesium ribbon goes on the balance and we find out that it weighs 2.05 grams. I had to do a little calculation to determine the mass of my magnesium ribbon to the best of my knowledge. And the way I did it was by using the length. And I measured out 100 centimeters of magnesium ribbon. And I put it on the balance and it weighed 2.05 grams. And so I'm thinking now I used a smaller fraction of that, I only use 2.65 centimeters, but I'm going to make use of the fact that the mass of this piece is probably proportionally smaller than the mass of this piece. So if 100 centimeters weighs 2.05 grams, then how many grams would be the 2.65 grams or centimeter sample? And that works out to be 0 0.0543 grams of magnesium in the strip that I used. 
And with this method, I can get more sig digs than just putting it on a balance and maybe getting one sig dig. It just allows me a little more accuracy. First, we'll start by weighing our empty calorimeter, 3.98 grams. And then we're going to add to it about 10 milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And we'll take the weight of that so we can subtract them and find out the exact weight of the hydrochloric acid solution that we put in there. Now with the hydrochloric acid in the calorimeter, uh, I need to take the temperature of the hydrochloric acid. It's been sitting out at room temperature for quite a while, so I assume it's going to be the same as room temperature, 20.6 or so, but let's just double check that. Actually, it's a little cooler. It's down around 20.0. Here's a quick shot of the reaction. You can see some bubbles being formed. That's the hydrogen. I'm just gonna let this go until this is done and then I'll get the final temperature that we reach. And you can see that the temperature is definitely increasing as the reaction is proceeding. That means we're looking at an exothermic chemical reaction because the reaction is releasing heat and it's heating up the solution that the thermometer is actually in. Next, we're going to get ourselves a small sample of magnesium oxide. Let's get rid of that. And add a teeny tiny bit to our weighing dish. And 0.068 looks pretty good. And we're going to do the same thing with our sample of magnesium oxide in the hydrochloric acid. And we're going to watch the temperature change on that one. You can see that it is going up at a small amount. It's up to 23 degrees, 23.2, and we'll continue to watch that. And now that we have our laboratory data, it is time to do some analysis and figure out our final answer. Just a reminder, this is our Hess's Law setup over here with the magnesium and hydrochloric on the first reaction the magnesium oxide and hydrochloric on the second reaction, and then our reference equation, thanks Google, uh, for the third equation. <clears throat> and once again, Hess's law says that if we can get these reactions to add up to the overall reaction, we can add up the delta H's and get a similar, uh, an equivalent amount of energy for the one step. So let me show you my data now that I've put it back in the table. In trial one, the first reaction, the mass of magnesium is there. 0.0543 is a very small amount of magnesium. And the mass of the calorimeter, hydrochloric, the mass of the HCl, and my initial and final temperatures for that. Okay, so we're going to use this to calculate delta H for that first reaction. How are we going to do that? Well, when you have lab data like this, to find your delta H, you're going to need to figure out how much heat was absorbed or released. And then divide it by the number of moles because delta H is going to be in kilojoules per mole. So we have to find Q, which is equal to CM delta T. Because we have a solution and we're monitoring its temperature change, we can make take its heat capacity, its mass, and the temperature change um, to get the total number of joules, which we can change to kilojoules. And then we divide by the number of moles of reactant that are there. So let me show you my calculation number one for reaction number one. So for that trial one, my delta H is going to be negative, and there's a negative sign in there. Let me pause for a second, because the in my reaction, for example, this one is increasing in temperature. The final temperature was higher than the initial, and so I ended up with a positive delta T. But I'm throwing in a negative there. We throw in a negative to change the sign, because the water is heating up. That means the water is endothermic. It's actually absorbing energy. But that energy had to come from somewhere, and that was the reaction. And so we're changing the sign because the reaction itself is actually exothermic. So we get a negative delta H. So it turns out I was using 0 0.00223 moles of magnesium. And let's talk about this top part. Now, the solution was heating up. Now, And you might be thinking, well, that's the heat capacity of water, right? Well, yes. And where's the hydrochloric? Well, it turns out that the hydrochloric is very a small, tiny part of the solution. Most of the solution is just water. So we're going to approximate and use the heat capacity of water. This number comes from the total mass of the solution, the total mass of the hydrochloric acid and the magnesium. They're all going to heat up together. And then the temperature change. I do the math, hammer away at my calculator, and I get 4, 460,332 joules 
per mole. That's a big number. Um, but change it into kilojoules per mole, it becomes a little more manageable, 460. And we will, again, we'll make that negative because it's exothermic. Okay, we're going to do it again with the other trial. The only difference here in the second trial is that instead of using magnesium, we're using magnesium oxide. And again, a similar mass to it, similar mass and volume of hydrochloric acid. This temperature change was not nearly as big as the, the first temperature change. It's a lot less exothermic. It is exothermic, but just a lot less. Uh, we only had 6.3 degrees of temperature change on that. But I'm going to do the same calculation as before using trial two data. So delta H is going to be a negative again, 4.184 joules per gram degree. This solution had a total mass of 9.95 grams and a temperature change of 6.3 degrees. The amount, number of moles of magnesium oxide I was using, 0 0.00169. If you need a refresher on how to change something into moles, uh, you can check the, the video link below. That works out to a delta H of 155,000 joules per mole or 155 kilojoules per mole. And again, this one is also negative. So I know it might be, seem weird that I'm just adding negative signs because, you know, when can we do that? Well, if we know that it's exothermic, we can make sure to add the negative signs just because we know it's exothermic. And finally, here is my Hess's law setup. I've included my new delta H's that I've just found along with the reference delta H. And Hess's law again says, if I can make these add up to this, I can simply add up their delta H's. But we have a problem. I don't know if you're, you're noticing this, but in my uh, system of equations, whenever you add up a series of equations to get a rep target equation, you have to do two things. You have to make sure that everything's on the appropriate side of the arrow and that everything else that you don't want down here is canceling. Now, a couple of things are working well for me. I've got magnesium on the left-hand side, which is where it should be. I've also got one half of an O2 from our reference equation on the appropriate side. But the magnesium oxide is supposed to be on the right-hand side, but up here it's on the left-hand side. And so what are we supposed to do with that? Well, one of the cool things about Hess's law is that you are not stuck with these equations as they're written. You can manipulate them however you need to manipulate them. And in fact, I'm going to do that right now. And I'm going to say, what if we reverse that middle equation and put the products on the left now as reactants and the reactants become products and I've just switched it around. Um, the magnesium is still on the appropriate side. The oxygen is still on the appropriate side, but now the magnesium oxide is also on the appropriate side where it should be. Now notice what I did with the delta H. Um, I changed the sign. The value of delta H stays the same. The sign changes because now we're going in the opposite direction, which hopefully will make sense. If it releases 155 kilojoules in one direction, it must absorb 155 kilojoules in the other direction. So you're allowed to do that, no problem. So we're just gonna switch it. And then some magic happens because we had two hydrochlorics on the left. Now we have two on the right and they will cancel. Magnesium chloride is on the right, one on the left, they will cancel. The water will also cancel and magically there is some hydrogen that's going to cancel as well. So this is great. All three of those add up to the total target equation. And therefore, my all I have to do now is just add up the three delta H's. Negative 460 plus 155, negative 286, and I get negative 591 kilojoules as my answer. All right, so that's, that's my answer. And I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. And you might be wondering, well, how good should we be feeling about this? Is that correct? How do we know it's correct? Well, um, I looked up the accepted value for this lab, and it turns out that the accepted value is negative 601. So when I burn that magnesium in oxygen, and it makes magnesium oxide, 601 kilojoules are given off for every mole that's reacted. And so 591 is actually pretty close to that. And I plug it into my percent error formula, which you're going to want to remember. Make sure to know this one so you don't have to ask your teacher all the time uh, how to do a percent error. Accepted minus your value over the accepted. And I got 1.66% error, which I'm extremely happy about. So there you have it. Some uh, Hess's Law Lab with some data collection and some calculations. Hopefully that'll help you in your chemistry travels. And in the meantime, 
uh, happy studying and have a great day.